Women Taking the Lead, Episode 133. Life really is short, and we're not guaranteed any extra hour or any extra minute or any extra day. But the good thing is that life is trying to give us good things. So whatever it is we're desiring, whatever it is that I'm desiring at the moment, there's nothing wrong with it, and it can be accomplished. But it's up to me to actually go out there and seek that thing and pursue it. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognize to reserve your spot in our upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work you do. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Osai Amokbai Lassisi, who is the creator of the Happy People, Happy Profit system to hiring and retaining the right people. She also is the founder of a community of the same name that's on Facebook. She is the HR Director of Havala Open Door Limited, an organization with over 3,000 staff members. She is a recovering U.S. attorney who found that she was more passionate about people than contract agreements. Some of her books include Invest in People, Invest in Profits, and People Are Not Stupid. I really enjoy that title, Osai. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a little intro for everyone. So tell us more about you and your own humble beginnings. Okay, Jody, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Um, a little bit more about me. I I just love people, as I said in the um, in my bio. I just love people and. I have spent a lot of time working with people and just trying to figure out what is exciting for me, what works for me. And it's in that process that I found out that working with people was what my passion, where my passion was around. And so I decided to focus more on that. I have a wonderful husband that I love hanging out with and an 18 month old daughter. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So you are the HR director of an organization with over 3,000 staff members. You have a Facebook community, you have a podcast, and you have a toddler. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. bless you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) Well, thank you for having the time to be with us today. I really appreciate it now, now that that we've got all of that in perspective. (laughs) But I'll say, you know, you've definitely gain confidence. You've come a long way. You're doing all these really great things. And I can hear it in your voice, living a life that you're very passionate about. Mm -hmm. But take us back to a time when you were playing small and you may not have been aware of it at the time. It's usually in retrospect that we look back and realize, you know, we were undervaluing how much we were capable of and so played life a little bit smaller. So share with us the story and the lessons you've learned. Right. Um, It wasn't that long ago that I was crying in the office, right? I was at work and I was so sad about what I was doing. I didn't feel like I was making any kind of impact. I wasn't making a difference. I was working as a lawyer, which was what I thought I always wanted to do. Um, I had passed the bar. I had done everything. I'd done well in school. You know, it seemed like, okay, I finally have what I want, but I wasn't happy. Now, I started doing a lot of things on the side to try to figure out, okay, what do I want? Okay, when I was younger, I liked writing. So I would write. I started blogging about what I was going through um, in my life. And at the time, you know, I was single. So I said, okay, I'll write about being single. And whenever people would come across the blog, they'll say things like, oh my goodness, that really impacted my life. I really enjoy your writing style. And I'd always dismiss it. Like, oh, it's just a hobby. Oh, don't tell anybody about it. But on the other hand, I was really depressed about what I was doing during the day. I was depressed about about my life in general because, of course, as a woman, everything affects everything. So at one point, I started thinking, like, why do I, why am I making this decision to continue in this way? 
wouldn't it be better if I could live a life that made sense to me? Wouldn't it be better if I was doing something that I actually enjoyed? So I started thinking more deeply about it. And then I realized, you know what? What makes sense for me is people. I enjoy being with people. I enjoy helping people. And yes, I'm an introvert. I like being by myself as well. But what um, engages me, what gives me some kind of drive is helping people to come into alignment with their own purposes. So I started thinking, what can I do with my legal career, with my legal profession, with all the years of studies and all my years of experience? What can I still do? And that's when I started pivoting into HR. And as I pivoted, I realized, okay, I don't care about the paperwork aspect of it. Um, I don't care about ensuring all the boxes are checked because that's pretty much what I did as a, a legal person, as a lawyer. But what I cared about was that we were able to build teams that would get the kinds of results that we wanted because we were able to engage with the teams, we were able to get them to be their best, And we're able to do things that a lot of other organizations were not able to do. So I started realizing that, you know what, this is not something little. This is something massive. Uh, A lot of organizations don't have this opportunity. They don't have this skill. So it's something that I need to go out there and talk to people about. And that's when I built my system and... It's been working for for some time now, and then I I began consulting. So that's kind of how the story led to where I am right now. Oh, that's perfect. And there's a couple of things I definitely want to address. And what you said is, I loved how your playing small moment was really, because I find this happens to many people. They're playing small because they're living a life that they thought Mm -hmm. would bring them happiness, but it's not. And they feel like there's something wrong with them because they're not happy doing what should be bringing them happiness. But when they really stop and think about, well, what does make me happy? What do I enjoy? And that's exactly what you did. You realized you enjoyed, you know, working with people and finding out what made them happy and and lights them up. Mm -hmm. Then you could find the career that was well suited for you. And again, Like the work you're doing now, I know so many people who have businesses that are so ready to grow, like they're right there, they're right at that point, but they're so afraid to hire people because they just feel like it's going to be a bad experience Mm -hmm. overall, right? Because that's the fear, like, oh no, I have to hire somebody, this is torture, you know, and then we have to train them and make sure they're happy. But you have a system that can help them do that and do it easily. That's amazing. Exactly. And I just, I actually just got off a consultation um, maybe a few hours ago and I was just taking her through the system and just explaining it to her that it's really not as hard as people think. Um, Yes, there will always be exceptions, but essentially it's just five steps. You need to understand yourself, understand your business and all of those things. Then you also need to figure out the right fit and engineer the right fit for you. Then you need to go through trainings. I think this is where a lot of organizations miss it. They don't understand themselves, obviously, (laughs) most times they don't, but in trainings they they for some reason they just expect people to understand exactly how it works in their organization but you really need to train people to understand and that includes orientation and onboarding then you need to have strategic appreciation systems to make sure that people feel valued in the organization and then everything is encased around the right type of communication so in the end it's so simple but it's just about the application of the system. Yes. Once you know the system and how it works, mm-hmm. it's easy to apply. Exactly. But when you're just doing it blindly, then you tend to run into pitfalls. Exactly. So perfect. Well, Osai, now I'm, you know, because you're sharing so much value. I want I want to go right into your wake up call okay. because, you know, these this is that moment that people say either hits them like a bolt of lightning or it's a slow awakening. But I, what I find is even with the slow awakening, there is a moment where there is a choice. So however it happened to you, take us back to that moment and share with us the steps that you took that led to your success. OK, so. Essentially, 
there was the moment where I was, you know, dreading going into work. I was always dreading. And it wasn't like a dread, like, um, I was, I don't know, maybe I was in some level of depression. I was thankful for having the job, you know, uh, especially because I had colleagues who were looking for jobs. So I was thankful for it. But I was still dreading. I wasn't excited going into the office. But one thing I would always remember, I would always think about is, okay, what am I excited about? So I then decided to try so many different things. I said, okay, I like writing. I, I found a class um, in the community college. I took a creative writing class. Then I found something on um, Craigslist to teach creative writing to children. I applied for that. I got that. I was doing creative writing for children. So I kept doing things that would get out my creative juices. And I would try different things just to just to try to figure it out. Because oftentimes, yeah, we need to go back to what we did for fun as children. But it's not going to be exactly the way you did it. Sometimes it's not exactly that way. So I tried so many different things. Um, and eventually I started seeing, okay, these are my strengths. I, I can connect well with people. I'm good at empathizing. I took some personality tests as well. But some of those personality tests uh, didn't work so well for me because it was always like I could kind of skew them based on whatever I wanted to, to, to get, whatever answer I wanted to get. So I took some of those. I talked with friends. And then it was a gradual process now deciding, OK, do I stay with this job because I'm getting paid and it's, it's not terrible? Or do I start thinking about, you know, Life is short, and what can I do that would be more interesting, more exciting? So eventually, I just gradually started moving away. You know, I had some money in savings that gave me some kind of cushion, so I wouldn't be so afraid of, okay, if I don't have work for months or something, would, would it be terrible? And then I got the opportunity to work as uh, the HR director in, uh, in the company here in Nigeria. And so I said, you know what, I'll just move. I'll take on the opportunity. I have family here anyway. And, and that was where everything, <laughs> everything in my life was turned upside down. And it was chaotic for some time because there's a lot of adjustment. But after a while, it just made sense. I started to kind of, um, to kind of uh, get adjusted, get comfortable. And then it just, I felt like, wow, this is really, this was the best decision for me at that point. I love that because you know what I found that even if, you know, I call it all arrows are pointing that way, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> when it seems so obvious what you need to do, even when it's something that might be a little radical, like leaving the country, mm -hmm. you know, for a job, but all arrows are pointing that way. Rarely is it very comfortable. Yeah. Or easy to do, but ultimately can be the best thing for you because it's just a whole new opportunity. I mean, there's the adjustment period. You go through that, but all sorts of opportunities arise. And I didn't leave the country, but I left my home state mm -hmm. um, to go find a job. But all arrows were pointing that way. And again, when my job was ending, you know, deciding whether to, you know, apply look, do another job search or start my business. I started my business because all arrows were pointing that way. And in none of those, it was obvious, but it was not easy, mm -hmm. exactly. but it was worth it. Mm -hmm. So worth it. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you just got to be in tuned with yourself, what your strengths are, what makes you happy and go after that. You've really made a career of this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And also, what I want everyone to get is there's no one way to lead. You mentioned you're an introvert. We all have different personality types. We all, and like you said, like we all have different strengths and things that we're passionate about. Different ways that we want to connect with people. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to lead somewhat differently. Mm -hmm. So I say, what? How would you describe your leadership style? Okay, so for me, I like to believe that I have a more participatory leadership. So essentially, um, I try to get the team involved in a lot of the decisions we make, especially the ones that affect them. Why do I do that? Because I'm not an expert in everything. 
we have graphic designers on our team. We have um, web developers. We have customer service people. So we have so many different people, and they are supposed to be the experts in what they're doing. So what I try to do is to get them to help me make a better decision. Now, granted, not everything is everything is not about participation. There are times when I have to decide that, no, this is how we're going to go. And that's because maybe I have some more information that they, they don't have. So, but for the most part, it's more of, let me hear what you're thinking. Let me hear your ideas, your suggestions, and then we can go on from there. Awesome. And then they know you're listening and they're more willing to offer up their ideas. Exactly. Awesome. And Osai, what's the biggest leadership or business challenge that you're faced with right now? I would say that the biggest challenge would be um, finding well-qualified people for different positions. For me, oftentimes what we have to do is to hire people based on character and then give them the skills that we need to so train them on the skills. It would be a bit more efficient if we already had the skills, if they were coming in with the skills and then we could just hit the ground running. So for me, it's finding those people, which has made me to think maybe I need to get more into the recruitment industry or, and connect people with people so, so that the quality of people that you have access to is higher. But I haven't gone there yet. I'm, I'm, enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying what I'm doing currently. So I'm trying not to get too involved in too many things. Right, right. Or get really good at what you're doing now and find ways to outsource some of the work before you take it on. Because it doesn't sound like you're opposed to the recruitment process. It's just, you know, if anyone was with us right at the beginning, they know you've got a lot going on right now. <laughs> right, exactly. So I don't mind outsourcing it. And sometimes we do. It's just that sometimes um, the way we like to do things is not quite the way the, you know, someone externally is, externally mm -hmm. does their things. But it's always something that we could work on and maybe de create more details when we're coming up with um, the, the, the way that we want to get the work done. Yes. You know, and I think that that's something people, I know in Maine, people are feeling that, especially in the trades industries where they're not finding enough people going to school yeah. to learn the skills and get the training that they need. So they're oftentimes hiring somebody who's just got the enthusiasm and their training and skill or leading them to go to school while they're working with them part time. Exactly. And it can be challenging, especially because sometimes after you do all of that training, the person leaves and, um, yeah, you can have you can have clauses in your, your contract. But what I've found is that you really don't want people who don't want to be with you anymore. You know, even if there's a clause that says you can't leave before three years or a year after the training, they become a they they become different people when their minds are set on leaving. So you really don't want to tie them down with a contract when they're ready to go. Figure out how they can transition and hand over and let them go. And you'll just, it'll be a better culture for the organization, but it's an expensive thing to go through, but that's usually what works out for us. Mm. Now on the flip side, what is one thing that you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Um, I'm excited about so many things. I'm such an excitable person. I, <laughs> I'm excited about, I'm just excited about the potential, you know? Oftentimes people talk about a lot of the negative things going on, but I see a lot of positive going on. And um, one of the things that I'm, I'm excited about is um, building my podcast, getting that out there. But mostly I'm working on writing a lot more. Um, I, have, I, I have quite a few books. So I want to put my system into a book so that it can get into the hands of so many more people who might not be able to afford me. And I'm excited. I'm excited mostly about that. So just getting the message out there to people, knowing that, you know what, if you really want to get the best out of your team members, 
just treat them well. You know, it's not, it's not going to cost you more. It might cost you maybe five seconds more of your life, but essentially it's not going to cost you so much more or more money. And that's what a lot of businesses are scared of. And instead it's going to give you a lot more profit in return. Mm, so easing people's fears, getting the knowledge in their hands so they can do more. Exactly. Awesome. All right, Osai, I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup now. Okay. So tell us, what is one practice that you have that helps to make you a better leader? Okay, so the one thing that I've been doing a lot more lately is trying to take time in the morning to just meditate and um, do some affirmations just to calm my mind down. Because like you said, I have a lot going on. And so I find that even if it's just sitting down and just being thankful, just sit down for 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how, many, how much time I have, um, just sit down and be thankful about the day. Don't just rush and start responding to emails. Don't just rush and start like, oh, going on Facebook or whatever. Just sit down, think about the day, be thankful for everything that you currently have. That's what I do. I'll just take time to be thankful calm my mind down, focus my mind, and then um, just say some affirmations. Like like one I, I love saying is, today is a great day. Because uh, there was a time when I used to dread the day. Like, oh, I love Mondays, but I hate Sundays or something like that. So every day I just try to remind myself, today is a great day. Or I control my emotions. Those kinds of things have really helped me to just calm myself down and to be focused on whatever goal I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah, it really sets the tone for the day. I love that. Exactly. And Osai, what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? Okay, so there are so many great books, as I'm sure you're aware. But the one book that really resonated with me when I was looking and searching was Tribes by Seth Godin. And the subtitle is We Need You to Lead Us. And um, I really like that book because it's simple, it's short, it's straight to the point. But essentially, it talks about we need you to lead us. Sometimes as women, we feel like, eh, I'm just the one that's interested in this. Eh, I don't think people really need me. They don't want me as a leader. Oh, leadership is overrated. But really, the world will come around somebody who is motivated to accomplish something. And that's what I found because one, when I started talking about treating our people better, getting our teams to do well by treating them better, I kept feeling like, oh, nobody cares about this. And the more I talked about it, the more I found people who cared about it. And so this book, Tribes by Seth Godin, I really recommend you pick it up. I'm sure you can read it. You can finish reading it in like a couple of hours or a day. And it will just pretty much give you the gist of it, of why it's essential that you lead wherever you are. Because a lot of people are dependent upon you. And, and you just need to take that responsibility. Because without you, there are some things that will not be accomplished in the same way. And so, so, yeah, that's why I really like the book. And then as far as some other stuff, I guess you could talk about Start With Why by Simon Sinek. But once you read Tribes by Seth Godin, it will start you on that journey of figuring out exactly why it's important for you to be your best, for you to lead, and how you can go out there and find out that no matter how nuanced your idea might be, there are people out there interested in it, looking, looking for a community like yours especially now that we're all connected through the internet. Yeah, it's a great book and it's great on audiobook too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've listened to the audiobook, but Seth Godin has a great voice, a great oratory style, and he 
can tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He does a great job. I can listen to his books for enjoyment. I mean, I'm learning a lot, but I sometimes I forget that it's educational because it's so enjoyable <laughs> um, to listen to his books. And, you know, I also want to underscore, I think sometimes as women, because this often happens to us, we think, oh, if I take the lead, I'm going to have to do all the work. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that's some of the intimidation about taking on leadership roles. But actually, when you're in a leadership role, the net, you know, take the role. But the next step is to delegate. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There are people around you who are willing to help you, who will step up and help you. You just have to learn how to delegate. And if you don't know how to do that, you should be contacting me because <laughs> I can help <laughs> you do that. All right. I'll say what advice would you give your younger self? Um. Okay, so talking to my younger self, I would tell myself that, you know what, life really is short and we're not guaranteed any extra hour or any extra minute or any extra day. But the good thing is that life is trying to give us good things. So whatever it is we're desiring, whatever it is that I'm desiring at the moment, there's nothing wrong with it and it can be accomplished. But it's up to me to actually go out there and seek that thing and pursue it, you know, because there were times when I felt that, why am I desiring this freedom? Why am I desiring this happiness? Why can't I just stay where I am and just do whatever I want, you know, and just be okay there? But it's okay for me to realize that there's more to life, but I need to go out there and pursue it because life is short. And when I look back, I'll find that I, I wasted time when I could have accomplished all those other things I wanted to accomplish. Mm, right. Oh, it's such a different perspective when you think about it. Yeah. You know, that, you know, what if this was my last day? Has it been a good life? Mm -hmm. Did I have a good day? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's hard for us to think in those terms, but it changes the way you live yeah. when you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll say now share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. Okay, so I just read um, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, or Waddles, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was so good to me. It just, it just reminded me that, you know what, there's so much that's, that's amazing in this life. And one of the things that he said was, the desire to do something is proof that you have the power to do it. The desire to do something is proof that you have the power to do it. So sometimes I have these dreams or these grandiose ideas and I feel like, oh no, I can't accomplish all of that, you know? Instead of thinking, just start. You'll find somebody who will help you accomplish it. Just by having that desire means that you have that power to accomplish it. You might not know exactly how you're going to do it, but at some point you're going to figure it out. And that has been resonating with me lately and it's making me realize that I shouldn't take anything lightly. I shouldn't take any idea lightly. I might not be able to do everything right now, but I shouldn't just dismiss it. You know, just for the mere fact that I am desiring something means I have the power to accomplish it. Now, it's up to me to decide if I'm going to use that power or not. And I hope right. I, 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 I decide to use the power. Absolutely. Like you can decide not to do it, but you can no longer say, I can't. Exactly. I'm not capable. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love it. All right. Lastly, Osai, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? Okay. So... The best way to connect with me is by um, coming to my Facebook community. It's the Happy People, Happy Profit community. And um, you can just search for, you can search for it on Facebook or you can go through um, the Facebook link, facebook.com slash groups slash happy people, happy profit. So that's facebook.com slash groups slash happy people, happy profit. And I'm usually there and just sharing tips on building the kinds of teams that get results. Awesome. And for those of you who are listening and on the go, you can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com. 
Osai, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us because you are a busy woman. (laughs) We are all better for having met you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really, really enjoyed engaging with you and your community. It's such a privilege. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life? Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognized to reserve your spot in my upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work that you do. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me, and here's...